Today we're determining the best Pokemon for fighting each gym leader in Generation 2. Starting off with the flying type leader Faulkner, Totodile is by far the best choice of your limited options for this early game fight. The first reason for this is amongst the many middling Pokemon we see in the opening routes, there really just aren't many options. A lot of people point to the early Geodude as its rock type resists flying, but Faulkner has the super effective move Mud Slap that also reduces accuracy. And this just results in an extremely inconsistent fight for the rock guy. The only way Geodude might solo Faulkner is if you grind it to level 11 to get rock throw, which is unfortunately above the level 9 cap of this gym. We're only going to cover Pokemon at or below the highest level of the gym leader since overleveling makes the game way too easy. Now outside of Geodude, the NPC traded Onyx fares a similar fate, Chikorita gets destroyed by Gust, Cyndaquil struggles with Mud Slap, which leaves Totodile as the best remaining option. Rage comes at level 7, which upon using the move raises the user's attack by one stage every time it's hit. To beat Faulkner, you simply need to let Totodile exchange a few blows with his lead Pidgey, and by the time Pidgeotto comes out, you're almost guaranteed a two-hit kill. The ability to consistently solo Faulkner makes Totodile the obvious candidate for strongest Pokemon for the first gym. Things are going to get way more interesting from here though, as we get into some mind-blowing strategies for the later gyms. But before that, we're going to take a look at the best Pokemon to use against Bugsy. Now, despite Geodude's less than stellar performance in the first gym, it rises to its astounding Gen 2 reputation for Bugsy. Since his leading Metapod only knows Tackle, String Shot, and Harden, this allows for an extremely easy setup. You simply let Geodude get a defense curl in, and then start dropping rock throws. His cocoons won't take more than two shots to fate, and due to Scyther having a negative relationship with facefuls of rock, Bugsy's iconic ace goes down with a single rock throw. Now, speaking of iconic Pokemon, Whitney's Mill Tank is considered one of the hardest Pokemon to beat. Jodo. Her Clefairy is trivial, but Miltank is a fully evolved Pokemon with great bulk, attack, and speed at a point in the game where most of your team will only be a second or first stage evolution. When you then combine the RNG of attract and stab boosted stomp flinches with the exponentially increasing damage of rollout, you get a fight that gets out of hand faster than Colleen Bellinger ukulele memes. This is a subscription checkpoint though, so you might want to subscribe if you ever want a chance of beating Whitney again. See, fortunately, for you, there are a few Pokemon that perform well in this fight. Croconaw stands out with Rage Strats, since Clefairy typically opens with Double Slap, and every single hit will boost Croconaw's attack. It's not too hard to get plus 4 or even plus 5 stage attack here and only take minimal damage. Despite this seeming advantage, however, it won't be strong enough to do any more than 3-shot her Miltank. And unfortunately, this leaves Whitney with a lot of openings to attract your likely male starter and essentially guarantee Croconaw going down. Now, Geodude is a better option for this fight. The name of the game with this one is actually beating Whitney at her own game. A female Geodude can get off a defense curl, which both doubles the base power of rollout and ups defense by one stage. Whitney has no super effective moves here, so she's basically left to roll back at you. At this point, the fight is in your favor, but basically just up to luck, where you're just praying rollout doesn't miss to secure a win. But the best Pokemon to fight Whitney with is Muscle, the traded Machop, which can be acquired in the Goldenrod department store. At level 20, this Machop will always one-shot her Clefairy, letting it take no damage before the real event even starts. The benefits just start here, though. Muscle always comes as female, so there's no chance of her sending off an attract. Next, since fighting resists rock, Machop will also take extremely low damage from her rollouts. Also, since Karate Chop has a 1 in 4 chance of critting, she can't spam Milk Drink without facing the risk of dying by one. In fact, the only way a level 20 Machop can lose to her Mil Tank is if the AI chooses Stomp every time and gets multiple flinches. So Machop basically covers everything Whitney can throw at it and is by far the best Pokemon for securing Badge 3. Now as we move on to Morty, we need to introduce another criteria that hasn't really come up for the first three badges. Kadabra is one Pokemon Gen 2 fans love, and upon a lot of testing, it's a very solid performer against the Ghost Leader. Psybabe will one-shot both his Ghastly and his first Haunter. It's even possible 
for a properly trained Kadabra to outspeed his Gengar. And while Kadabra can't take out Gengar before getting one shot itself, it's worth mentioning here that Alakazam can. With higher speed and special, Psybeam is guaranteed to one shot his entire team, which would make it the best Pokemon for this fight. Unfortunately, there is one big piece of criteria that Alakazam does not hit for this list. Alakazam is not accessible to most players due to lack of access to trade. See, on top of level caps, the other criteria for this list, which has not come up yet, is that of accessibility. If a Pokemon is impossible to get due to something like a trade wall, it becomes a less consistent an option for players and is therefore going to be outclassed by options that do just as well but lack such barriers. This is the case for Girafferic as well, which I was really rooting for. In Gold and Silver, if you're willing to take the walk through Mount Mortar, you can find Girafferic above Mahogany Town, and it's seemingly the perfect Pokemon for this fight. It's immune to ghost moves and resist Gengar's Dream Eater, all while being super effective to his whole team. Unfortunately, however, Girafferig was removed from Route 43 in Crystal, making it unavailable in the primary version of Gen 2. But fear not, ladies and gentlemen, for there is a Pokemon which is just as consistent as Alakazam, yet can be found in the opening route of all three games. Believe it or not, Raticate can solo sweep Morty. With high attack and access to the TM Dig, at level 25, it will one-shot his Ghastly and First Haunter. It will outspeed them as well, so there's no worry of seeing Curse or Nightshade. Not only that, but Raticate can sweep his Gengar 100% of the time. The secret here is that if you pre-poison Raticate before this fight, it means Morty's Gengar will be unable to put you to sleep. Raticate is immune to Shadow Ball, and since Hypnosis will fail, this makes Dream Eater useless, meaning all that Gengar's left to do is mean look. Morty can be super daunting, but it turns out a surprisingly very basic Pokemon is the best for these spoopy boys. If you found that strategy interesting, you'll be really surprised about the best way to beat Claire, but from here we're going to head west to Cyanwood to challenge the fighter Chuck, who, if we're being honest, is probably the easiest later in the game, and so that opens up the possibility for a lot of Pokemon that can sweep him. In fact, there are so many options for Chuck, I think we'll do an impromptu top five. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, top five Pat is back. So coming in at number five, we have Exeggutor. Being Grass Psychic means this guy resists every single move Chuck can throw at it. Confusion alone is enough, but if you want to really pop off, you can breed a female Execute with a male Sunkern to give it Mega Drain, and then evolve the Execute after 19 to get Confusion. Exeggutor now walls his team and can sweep super easy, even if put to sleep by Polyrath. The only reason it's not number five is the Leaf Stone does not have perfect accessibility, and there are more simple solutions. Like Hypno, who resists fighting moves, has high special defense to tank surfs, and can make for an incredible easy sweep with just the move Confusion. But even better, and coming in at number 3, is Scyther, who gets Wing Attack at level 30 and four times resists fighting type moves. This flying bug one-shots Chuck's Primeape and doesn't even take half damage from a Stab Surf before taking Polyrath down in two shots. But finally, ladies and gentlemen, at number two and number one, we have Alakazam and Kadabra. Whether you're able to evolve Kadabra or not, it doesn't really matter. Psybeam is so strong that along with being a guaranteed encounter through the game corner, there's really nothing easier to use to sweep Chuck with. Alakazam is a two-turn solo sweep, but even Kadabra, who is much more accessible, is amazing. In my tests, it solos nearly every single time, and in one instance, it was able to be put to sleep, get hit by back-to-back -back dynamic punches, wake up, hit itself in confusion, and still finish off his polyrath. Psychics are pretty busted in Gen 2, so it's no surprise that the best Psychic is your best bet for this fight. Now, from here, since Badge 6 is non-linear, we're actually going to cover Price first, since his gym level cap is lower than that of Jasmine's, despite him being the canonical 7th gym leader. With Ice-type being quite bad defensively, Price is also fairly easy, with a lot of Pokemon up for the job of attempting a sweep. Fighting types like Machop fare well here, but don't have the resistance to make it through all three Pokemon. There are, however, 
however, a lot of other good options. Now, as mentioned in our video 23 obscure Pokemon catches in Gen 2, although extremely uncommon, Caesar can be acquired as early as the fourth gym. At level 30, a Caesar with max happiness resists all attacks from his team, can one-shot Seal with Return, two-shot Dugong, and then two to three-shot Piloswine with Metal Claw. And while a very consistent sweep, its lack of accessibility does make it less than ideal for this fight, however. Ampharos evolves at Flaffy right on time at level 30 and gets access to not just Thunder Punch, but also Fire Punch. It's able to one-shot Seal, two-shot Dugong, and since Piloswine has no ground moves for some reason, Fire Punch will two-shot it before it can do anything. Unfortunately, however, as the original and biggest sin of Pokemon Crystal, you can't get Ampharos, and so that leaves us with Lantern as the best option. First and foremost, Lantern is accessible for all three versions of Gen 2 through fishing in Olivine City. Its water typing lets it resist both water and ice moves, while Piloswine can only hit it for neutral damage. Spark is enough to deal with the two seals, and Stab Surf will easily take down Piloswine. Since Lantern is fairly useful for Gym 8 too, and does not rely on trade capability, it's probably the best option to go with for price. Now moving on from here, it's time for the Iron Fist, the Steel Curtain, the Metal Metal Megalomaniac. Well, not really, but we're looking at Jasmine, the Steel type leader. Jasmine is formidable, and there's a lot of decent options to help beat her, but few Pokemon that can really consistently solo. A ground type like Graveler is great for the Magnemites, but gets dusted by Steelix. Water types like Feraligator typically can't make it through the Magnemites to get to Steelix, and the best possible fire type, a stat blessed level 35 Kulava, can do the job, but there's one Pokemon that is even more consistent. Quagsire feels like it was built to sweep Jasmine. Its ground typing resists Magnemite's electric attacks, allowing for earthquakes, digs, or even mud slaps to destroy them. From here, even a level 30 Quagsire is able to kill Steelix in three to four shots of surf during sunny day. And that's where water damage is cut in half. And plus, since water resists steel, Steelix's iron tails aren't even enough to three-shot Quagsire. With all that in mind, Quagsire is the perfect counter to Jasmine and the best Pokemon for securing the mineral badge. But finally, ladies and gentlemen, we've made it to Claire. While Whitney is more known for taking down players in an easy sweep, I've always felt that Claire is Johto's hardest gym leader. And this is due to her sheer consistency. Under the right circumstances, you've seen that pretty much every gym leader can be solo. Claire, on the other hand, in nearly every instance, is just too good for that. Without a multitude of factors, even at level 40, there's really no Pokemon that can guaranteed solo. The first reason is her three Dragonairs know Surf, Ice Beam, and Thunderbolt, which basically guarantees that one will have super effectiveness over you. She's really the only gym leader that has good coverage. But even if you get past all of that, Kingdra is not only in insanely bulky, but also only weak to dragon moves. Of which you probably won't even have a dragon move, let alone a dragon type of your own. Now, if we're considering all Pokemon, the absolute best Pokemon to take on Claire is to, no surprise, Alakazam with Gengar as a close second. Fast, high, special attack, Ice Punches are just really good. At level 40, Ice Punch will have about a 60% chance to take out each Dragonair in a single shot. Otherwise, you're probably getting paralyzed. There's also between a 25 and 50% chance that Kingdra's Hyper Beam can one-shot you, so Alakazam can do it, but not super consistently. It's the best option, but again, lame because it's inaccessible. Another thought I had for this gym was legendaries. At level 40, this is the first time any are accessible in all three iterations of the game. And while Raikou and Suicune seem like they would be the best options, they both suck. If you only have Thundershock, Raikou can't even deal with her Kingdra, whereas Suicune has to rely on 70% blizzards to even try to one-shot her Dragonairs. To put it simply, there's not even a legendary that's good for dealing with Claire. So 
Legendaries are out, as the would-be best option, Alakazam and Gengar can take third place, and the second best option is actually going to be Slowbro. Slowbro struggles against her second Dragonair, which knows Thunderbolt, but if you're able to take out these first two Pokemon, Slowbro is able to set up with a curse on her last Dragonair and quickly take it out with an Ice Punch. From here, a max friendship return should be able to two-shot her Kingdra. So her last two Pokemon and biggest threat are guaranteed, whereas the other two are basically going to be a coin toss on you getting lucky. But there is one Pokemon that under the right circumstances is nearly always up for the job. And the best Pokemon for beating Claire is actually Ursaring. Located on the violet side of Dark Cave, if you picked up this early Teddy Ursa, at this point it's basically guaranteed to be Max Friendship, which means that at this point, Ursaring will be landing 153 base power returns with an incredibly high attack stat of 130. Now, we ran a bunch of calculations, and this alone is by far the most consistent Pokemon for this fight. Even the absolutely worst stat at Ursaring has around a 50-50 shot to one hit KO all three Dragonairs. Pre-poisoning strats like what we did with Morty here means you ensure you won't get thunder waved, but there is a way to make this fight nearly guaranteed. After defeating Team Rocket, Mary of the Goldenrod Radio Tower will give you a pink bow, and this increases the damage of all normal moves by 10%. And this boost, although subtle, means that an average DV Ursaring that's been trained from the start of the game can one-shot all three of Claire's Dragonairs at level 36. Even her tanky Kingdra is only a two-shot, and given that she always goes for Hyper Beam, Ursaring essentially guarantees you a win against Joe those hardest gym leader. Now, if you want to guarantee me a win with my silver play button, you can hit subscribe. But other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.